been working so hard on our election unit, and I know that he's very eager to hear what he has to say, and we have lots of questions for him as well. We're going to let Mayor Smiley talk to us for a little bit about what he does. Then we're going to have our questions and answer portion, and then we'll be all done as a whole group. So I know you guys are going to be awesome audience members and listen very carefully and give him your undivided attention. Let's welcome Mayor Smiley.
try to stay back so you don't get run over or anything because so not always can they see you, you know, when you're looking and walking up, everyone wants to see what's going on, but always be careful when you see these big red trucks, which would be the street department or the front end loaders just for your own safety. And I know that uh, also we uh, are in charge of the swimming pool. Does anybody go to the swimming pool here for the city? Most of you have been there in different one, one way or another. So we also uh, run that through our parks department. And then we also have the golf course. I don't know if many of you have ever gone out there. One little gentleman told me he had hit some golf balls with me over by the uh, golf, course, golf course before. So, uh, you know, we uh, do a lot in the city as far as the mayor goes. And I know that uh, the teachers wanted me to answer some questions too. Uh, do you want me to go ahead and start asking questions? Yeah, we actually uh, had our class write a few questions. Okay. Each. And we went through and selected some that we thought showed up the most or would be the most interesting. Okay. So these students are sitting close to the front. All right. So they can just come up maybe one at a time. We'll start with Alexis. They're going to introduce okay. themselves and ask you the question. Okay. And then you can take a couple minutes and answer. All right. That sounds good. Hi. Okay, that's a good question, Alexis. How long do I get to be mayor? Well, the mayor uh, is elected every four years. So the people, right now you have an election going on, and I, I, I believe uh, Mrs. Murphy talked about you're doing a little bit of uh, election, uh, how the election process works in your classroom. As far as the mayor, every four years, you, um, myself or someone else would run for mayor, and you have to be voted in. and there is no term limits on a mayor, so if I get elected, I can run again, and in four years I run again for the same position, and I have to be voted in. And if you have no competition, you automatically get reinstated. But if somebody runs against you, that's where you have to campaign and get the most votes to become the mayor. So you can run for mayor as long as people vote you in. Some of your other uh, positions are only uh, two terms. Uh, I don't want to touch too much on it, but like the President of the United States, they can only run for two terms, which is eight years, and then they have to sit out. And some of the county offices are that way as well. But the city's uh, offices, you can run forever as long as you get voted in. <coughs> Sometimes when you get my age, you can't hear very well, I guess. So anyway, uh, is a mayor the same as being voted in as the president? Well, it's a little different because the mayor is in charge of the city, where the president is in charge of the whole United States, our country. And also that you only get to run, as I just mentioned a little bit, they run for four years, but they can only run for two terms, which is an eight-year total. Yes. Part of your question, we've been talking in our class at least about um, the electoral college. Okay. So I think she's wondering, is that is it by popular vote, or is there something oh. similar to that in the state of Indiana? Okay, that's a good uh, question. Um, the electoral votes, um, how that works is that, uh, okay, you're voting for the whole state, and then actually they have so many electoral votes, and then if, uh, the population, whoever gets the most votes in the state gets all the electoral votes or how that state works. Some of them don't go all the way. The, uh, the mayor, it's just in Rochester city limits. So some of them, some, okay, who lives in the country? They ride a school bus, okay? Now, everybody lives in the country, your parents cannot vote for the mayor, okay? How many people live in the city? Okay, all your parents can vote for the mayor, okay? So that's a little bit of difference how the mayor and the president is because everybody can vote for the president in the state of Indiana and every state. And then that kind of helped answer your question there. So a lot of people, like myself, I grew up in the country when I was your age and I rode a school bus, but then I live in the city now, so that way I can be the mayor, okay? 
Okay. Harmony. Okay. Okay, that's a good question, Carly. Um, Carly asked me if I get a house like the president. Um, no, I do not. I mean, I have my own house, but it's my house that I bought myself, where the president gets a house to live for, live in, and the governor of the state of Indiana gets a house to live in as well. You have questions? Okay, do I work in an office? Yes, I do have an office, but I'm in my office not all the time. I'm everywhere. I have an office with a desk. I have my computer. Anybody work on a computer at school? I have a computer in my office. And I have a telephone and everything, but I do a lot of work running around. And I'm not always, when I say running around, I'm mobile and I'm in different areas all the time. But I do have an office that I come back to daily and many times a day if I'm not there. Sometimes I'm there all the day long, but many times I come and go and go to different departments and see what's going on. Yes? Okay, and what's your name? Kim. Okay, why did I want to be mayor? Um, I, I wanted to be the mayor for many years ago when I was in college, and I thought it would be a neat thing to do to be the mayor. Um, some of my background is, uh, does any parents or children here, your parents or your dad, are they in construction? Do they have any? Okay. Well, I was in, uh, okay, that's good. I was in college and I got a degree in college in business and then I had my construction company. And why I decided to be mayor is because that kind of falls into what I did as a construction business person. I put in water and sewer, I built houses, I put in uh, different things for construction. So that kind of comes into the category of where I'm at with the mayor. I oversee the street department, the water department, and also I have a business background to help with the other things. So I just always thought it would be neat to be the mayor. Okay. Um, those are good questions, too. What rules have I made and how did I come up with them? Well, I have, uh, as a mayor, I actually have ideas. And I have a city council who actually comes up with the rules, which are called ordinances, which that's a city law and a city ordinance. And what I do with the, uh, we all work together that way. And we have ideas, and sometimes it's called thinking outside the box. And, the, the rules have been in force for many years. The, uh, it's not that we just come in and change everything. We just we go along with the rules that are already set in place. Yes. You got a lot of questions here. So I got to keep talking. Okay. I have. That's a good question. How long have I been mayor? This is my fifth year of being the mayor. So I just started my second term. I had to run for re-election again last year. And so I first became the mayor in 2008, and my term went to 2012, and now in 2012 to 2015, four years of time. Yes. How do I warm up for my speech? Well, that's a, that's a good thing. Do you ever do calisthenics? I don't do that. <laughs> anyway. Um, I warm up to my speech. Uh, when, before I came here today, I, you know, I, I, I deal with this every day, so I have a lot that I, I just kind of uh, being uh, redone and the same thing over and over, so it's easy to talk about. But then also, I typed on my computer a little bit what I wanted to talk about. So I kind of broke it down, the fire department, the police station, and stuff like that. And then um, if I'm going to do something that I'm not very prepared for, I will write it down and I will stand up here with a podium and I'll have a piece of paper here to help me keep on track. So, have you ever got up in front of the class and kind of forget what you're going to talk about? Yeah. So, you want to be prepared and you want to uh, practice too. So, sometimes you want to even actually close the door and talk to yourself and uh, talk to your speech, you know, you kind of like rehearse it.
okay, Riley asked me, what are some of my daily duties? Well, when I, when I come into the office, everybody, if you get all this in here, when I come into my office in the morning, I come in, and the first thing I usually do is I hit the telephone and see who's called. I got a blinking light to see who's going to be needing something or have a problem or what's going on. And then when I get done listening to who called me, I will call my department heads if it goes to the street department, and I will funnel that over to my uh, street foreman, Lenny Conley, and I'll have him take care of it, or I have an operation manager who will also take care of anything that's going to be uh, needed to be addressed that day. Okay? No. Okay. Okay. Izzy has a good question also. How do we keep our city clean? Well, we, we want to have everybody help us out a little bit. Everybody here, we don't want to throw trash in the street, right? Okay. But I do have a street department that comes through. We have a street sweeper, and we will run the street sweeper along the streets. And we also have the uh, leaves right now. We put the leaves in there. We collect those. And we also, during the summertime, we've uh, also been keeping the uh, grass off the streets and everything we need to mow the yard. So basically, we've got a good street department and a lot of workers that help do that. Okay, did I have a uh, um, group that helped me become mayor? Yes, I did. Uh, what, what, what you do is uh, when you run for office, you get a, a group of your uh, people that support you, like your friends, and you have a committee. And so what they call that is a campaign committee. That I, When I first ran for mayor, I probably had 12 people on my committee. And I learned the first time that that's kind of too many people on my committee. So the second time I ran, I only had five people. And then we had people help us. So we do have a committee when you run for a public office. <coughs> yes. When I was campaigning, um, Noah, right? That's a good question. Was I nervous? Well, you always are nervous, you know. So that's, that is true. You get nervous. Uh, when the first time I ran, yes, I was nervous, you know. And I was nervous the second time because you always, if you're running for an office, you want to win, but that doesn't mean you're going to win. So it, it is nervous that when you're running for an office like this that not always are you guaranteed to win. So it's part of sport. Sometimes you win, sometimes. Do I have plans to make the city better? better? And what was your name? You didn't tell me your name. Do I have plans to make the city better? Yes, I do have plans to make it better. Um, every day is a, a new challenge to make it better for you and everybody here to uh, come home to the city. The city is a nice city and we want to do more things. We just got to put some new streets in. We also want to have better parks. We want to uh, have a better swimming pool. So we, we, we got to keep looking at things to improve the city. But without going into too much detail, we're on a budget. We only have so much money to spend to work on it to make it better. And in the, in the long term, we want to make it better to for everybody, so your kids will come back to Rochester and stay here too. But not everybody will be here because some of you will move away. My name is Gavin. Gavin asked me if I ever froze during the speech. Uh, yes, I have for moments. It seems like forever when you're up here talking, and sometimes you'll lose your train of thought. And that's why I said earlier you want to practice. So when you speak in class, you know, they always say you stand up in front of the mirror and, and practice to your mirror while you're saying your speech. And the more you rehearse it, the easier it gets. So, the same thing in school. You know, it, went, it seems like not too long ago, I was here in middle school. I went to this school when I was younger as well. And that's been a couple years ago. So, you do want to rehearse your speech because if you don't, sometimes you'll forget what you're going to say. And then you have to go on and kind of they allow it somehow to keep on rolling. Any more questions? We have a couple more. A couple more? Okay.
Okay, Gavin, that's a good question. He's asking if I did a uh, project in school in fourth grade as being a governor in fourth grade. Um, I wasn't the governor in uh, fourth grade or uh, anything in politics other than just uh, I played sports in school and football. And But I don't remember going back when we did this in fourth grade as you're doing in your class. I'm sure we did, but uh, I'm 56 years old, and that's uh, been a couple years ago. And, uh, so I, uh, I don't remember that. Sammy, that's a good question. Is it hard making a lot of decisions? Well, it's, it's not. Sometimes the, some of the situations are harder to um, come up with a direct answer sometimes. But a lot of times it's, uh, you kind of go with uh, basically what you feel the best for everybody. Some of my decisions may not be what I think I should do personally, but what's better for everybody. So if you look at that, just like your whole fourth grade class here can ask everybody a question, you probably have a lot of different answers one side or the other, but what's the majority of the people want, and that's how you have to do it with the decision making for the mayor. And what's best for the city, and also you have to look at what's best for the finances of the city. Okay, Gabby's asked me if I've ever been on TV before. I, I have been on some uh, news media uh, on the television, um, but as far as being on my own show or talk show, I, I have not done that. But I have been on the news when they have different situations. I know when we had the, uh, uh, some issues going on with the uh, beach out here. Remember, we put a beach in out there by the lake. Has anybody been out there? We had some beach problems. And then also I was in the news in the uh, uh, South Bend on another project I was there. Uh, one time I was uh, for breast cancer awareness that I was in Notre Dame. Everybody's heard of Notre Dame? And they, uh, they wanted people to be a pink tie guy, so I was one of the ones they nominated to be a pink tie guy to promote breast cancer. So I was on TV for that as well. So once in a while I did get on TV. Anybody else? I'm on TV right now. Channel 4 is here. I forgot about Channel 4, so. Okay, Caleb asked me one question now. He says, everybody, is my life different now? Do you think your life's different if you're the mayor? Yeah. See, here we go. Half of us say yes, half of us say no. Yes, it, it is a little different being the mayor. One reason it's different is that you've got to, uh, you've got to, uh, be ready to answer questions all the time. The mayor's job is basically 24-7. It, it never stops. So you're always uh, here or there. You, you're always uh, on, what I want to say, you're not on TV, but you, you've got to be ready to be available. Okay. Max asked me a question here. Do I have any advice on campaigning? My advice is when you're uh, doing your uh, government and you're going to do a lieutenant governor, the best advice I can say is go around and talk to everybody. And, uh, you want to be nice to everybody. You want to make sure they know who you are and you want to tell them what you want to do and what you stand for. You know, you, you just want to make sure that everybody knows you and when you campaign, go around and uh, just shake your hands and talk to the people. It's one of the best ways you can get elected so people understand where you're coming from, what your thoughts are, and who you are. They want to just know who you are. So that's the best way I got to buy is to campaign is make sure um, you uh, get along with everybody. Try to and be, uh, treat everybody equal. All right, let's thank Mayor Smiley for the